Hi everybody, my name is Dennis and welcome back to another album review. Today we're reviewing the second full-length album from experimental electronic artist Clarence Clarity, entitled Think Peace. So, I know I'm a little bit late to this review, the album's been out for a few weeks, but I just recently discovered it and it really caught my attention. It's beautifully experimental with some of the best production I've heard all year. I mean, we have some really heavy, really dark, really creepy um, beats, such as the song um, We Change. And there's just so much layering, so much beautiful synthesizers, so much incredible instrumentation across this entire album. I mean, we have some really um, light, really airy, almost like something from a N64 game, something really ambient. But then it's mixed with this really dark, really aggressive, really disturbing beat. And these fuse together in such an incredible way. Such contrasting sounds, but they're layered and mixed in such an effective way that it sounds really beautiful. And that occurs in the song Law of Fives. And things like this occur throughout the entire album. I mean, we have such another really, probably the most aggressive beat on the entire album from the song Fold'em. And this proves to be one of the most unique sounds on the album. And a lot of the songs do take more of a lighter experimental approach to things, where they're still really unique, but they definitely have a more lighter, very more easy-on-the-ear sound. I mean, something like um, True Love is very easy on the ears, very fun to listen to. But just every single track on this album is so amazingly produced in every single way. There's so much to love about everything and even the ones that don't sound all that great at first they grow on you really quickly like i mentioned earlier the song law of fives when i first heard it it was just okay i mean it was fine it was a fine song but the more i heard it the more it just got better and better and, and better. in a lot of ways that can be said about a lot of the songs of the album even the ones i really liked the first time i heard them they continue to get so much better as you listen to it again I mean, Adam and the Evil, I loved it the first time I heard it. It had beautifully cryptic lyrics, something that really makes you think, something that really makes you wonder about what did I just hear, what is he trying to say, and it has a lot of beautiful thoughts in it, it's really well written in a lot of different ways. And even though I loved it in every aspect the first time I heard it, the more I listen to it, the more I love it. It is such an incredible album where almost every single song just gets better and better and better. And I mean, I guess some of the songs don't quite do this to the same extent. I guess like Next Best Thing or Fold'em, maybe not quite as much, but still, these are both really good songs on their own too. I mean, Fold'em is the only uh, song on the album to feature another vocal artist. And um, it's this rapper, Shoddy. And man, Shoddy's verse is amazing. I mean, he almost does better than Clarence Clarity on this on this song. And I mean, the really dark, aggressive beat suits his voice really well. It's a really well-picked beat that can complement both the lighter, almost 80s-style vocals of Clarence Clarity, while still complementing this really, um, really dark and really aggressive rapping that Shoddy has to bring. It's so beautifully crafted that it can complement both of them so well. I mean, an interesting thing that this album does is it samples its own songs. I mean, the chorus on Adam and the Evil shows up again on Naysayer Magic Obeyer. And uh, We Change, a lot of it shows up on the song Same. And this isn't like it's unnecessarily copying itself. It's not like, oh, we ran out of ideas, let's just throw this thing in from another song. It uses it to influence the meaning of its own song. I mean, you can take any verse, put it in a different song, and the context of it will change. Context is very important to a lot of meaning. And when you take something from one song and put it in another, what it's saying changes a lot, and he uses this to his advantage to make some really interesting lyrics. I mean, Naysayer Magic Obeyer is a lot of um, how he feels like he's not in a very good relationship, like, like, make me feel like I make you feel good. And that's like the main hook of the chorus, but like, 
and this chorus has been put into same and has some much darker much edgier lyrics in the verse and it changes the meaning so much but it's so beautiful in every way there's just nothing that i don't love about this album i mean and this song vapid feels ain't vapid the everything in this song i just love it so much every single aspect of this song from the beautiful production from the way it slowly inches up into a amazing chorus i mean there's just nothing that i don't adore about this song and i mean there's just so much to this album it's so beautifully produced i mean this is so unique in so many ways and that's not saying that it has no influences whatsoever but it does so much to set it part itself apart from everything else and it's really consistent in its quality I mean, I guess the second half of the album isn't quite as good as the first half, per se, but it's still amazing. I mean, we have some great songs like True Love. It's a beautiful song. We have Law of Fives, which I've already stated my appreciation for. And the closing track, 2016, which offers some really great pianos in it. And piano is an instrument we don't see a whole lot on this album, but it's used so effectively on this song. And it makes it stand out a lot. And it's a really great closing to this amazing album. I mean, just from song to song to song, they all sound so different, yet they're so cohesive at the same time. It's Every song is unique in its own regards, but it never feels disjointed. It never feels like awkward transitions and sounds. It all has such a beautiful flow to things. And a lot of times, the very like last couple of notes in a song will be the very first notes in the next song. And even though this is a very minor thing... These little details are what makes great albums so great. Having such a careful attention to detail to where you make these little sounds just to help improve the flow of it, improve the listening experience, make the person who's listening to it enjoy what they're hearing. And there's just nothing that I don't love about this album. Now, there's a lot of things that I just can't put into words like how beautiful it's written how amazing the production is and i know that i'm just saying how great the production is over and over again but it's something so amazing that you just have to experience for yourself i mean the writing is top notch too clarence clarity is a really great songwriter whether it be really cryptic really entrancing lyrics such as those on adam and the evil versus things such as uh, that have more blunt message, such as embracing change, because we're all going to change on the song called We Change. And to saying, I'm going to do the best in what I'm doing. You can try and be popular, but I'm going to do my best to do my own thing in the song Next Best Thing, to where there's not a single, even remotely bad song on this album. I thoroughly enjoy every single track in its own regards. And a lot of times my enjoyment comes from completely different places. Whether it be from the ambient beauty of 2016, whether it comes from the beautiful lyricism of Adam and the Evil, whether it comes from the the dark and entrancing um, beats of We Change, or where it comes from just the overall beauty of a song and vapid feels ain't vapid. This is an amazing album through and through, and it's definitely something that no matter what kind of music you like, you should definitely check it out. I'm feeling a 9 out of 10 on this album. Uh, be sure to check it out for sure. Tell me what you thought about it. Uh, tell me how wrong my opinion is as always. I'll see you in the next review.